Welcome students to the online lecture on history of architecture 5. In today's lecture, we will discuss neo-modernism in architecture. So continuing with our timeline, here on the left extreme you can see pre-modernism, which was before industrial revolution. Then after industrial revolution, we start with the modernism as we have seen. Modernism started from 1920s and it continues till around 1980s from where the postmodernism started. So as part of the postmodern architecture, we have seen in historicism how they have taken reference for multiple references from the history, although in a very mocking manner and in a playful manner, they have taken references or uh, inspirations from historic styles. So historicism again was high on ornamentation Whereas the high-tech style was again a very simple and uh, with less ornamentation. So this high-tech style was mainly inspired by the metabolism revolution. Its main concept was to expose the services or the structural elements as the elements of elevation or aesthetics. So basically it imbibed the concept of served and servant spaces with the servant spaces being the service areas. So basically all the postmodernist movements were like a reaction to the modernist architectural style and they had their own way of taking inspiration from modernism and also in a way they were criticizing them also and mainly the minimalistic approach of modernism was criticized through this postmodernism style. So similarly, we have seen that historicism takes inspiration from pre and post Renaissance period and they reflected the approach of uh, abstraction. So they were against this uh, notion of abstraction, which was used in modernistic architecture and they have gone back to the pre-modern style so that they could take inspiration from those pre-modern styles. So we have seen how visual elements from Greek, Roman and European as well as like gothic flying buttresses were also taken into historicism whereas the major part of modernism was devoid of any such historical references coming to neo-modernism neo-modernism takes much of its inspirations from modernism although with slight changes as we'll see but still neo-modernism is a part of post-modernism in architecture because in neo-modernism we have eclecticism so as we have discussed in the previous lectures on beginning of postmodernism, the electricism, which we have uh, already seen that it draws inspirations from multiple sources, driving ideas, styles or tastes from a broad and diverse range of sources. So here we see the reason or the rationale behind the coming up of neo-modernism. So basically, since 1965, modernism started to fade out and a few hardliners that have tried to keep the geometric abstractions alive. So architects like Richard Meir, Charles Gwathme, I.M. Pei, Tadao Ando and Arata Izozaki continue to seek uh, sleek international style surfaces, highlighting pure space and form. But the problem they faced was that how to revive these principles as modernism was pronounced dead. So the neo-modernist for whom applied ornamentation was still a taboo had to look in a new direction. So in a way the neo-modernist want to continue with the visual style of modernism but also simultaneously criticizing the monotony and the obsoleteness of the modernistic style. Neo-modernism came as a reaction to the complexity of postmodernism, seeking a greater simplicity. Neo-modern architecture shares many of its basic characteristics with modernism. Both reject classical ornamentation, decorations and deliberate ambitions to continue pre-modernistic traditions. Neo-modernist buildings like modernist ones are designed to be largely monolithic and functional. So those who promote the neo-modernistic style, they try to instill that contemporary architecture has surpassed post-modernism in pursuit of this new style. So 
The term new modern architecture is sometimes used to refer to all buildings built after the 21st century and its beginning. So in general, there were these two main developments in design of architectural world after the advent of 21st century. One of them is the exploration of postmodernist architecture and the other is the re-research and development of modernism in architecture. So they basically developed in parallel. The development of the second one is called the new modernism or the neo modernism or the new design modern design. Although many designers in 1970s thought that modernism was dead. They believed that the internationalist style was full of elements that were not compatible with the local time and culture. Therefore, it was necessary to use various historical and decorative styles to make corrections which led to postmodernism. The movement of the communist movement, but some designers still adhere to the tradition of modernism and completely follow the basic design of modernism. So they had added a simple form of modernism to their symbolic significance according to new needs. But overall they can say that it is the descendant of modernism which continued upgrading into the new era. So here are a few characteristics of neo-modern architecture. Neo-modern architecture is one of the dominant forms of current architecture since the late 20th century. That is the end of the 20th century, 1980s onwards. And it tends to be used for a certain type of buildings while in the field of housing neo electric and neo historicist styles are preferred and for the great architectural landmarks one goes to the creativity of the master architects also known as the star architects neo modernism is applied in large project projects but not highlighted such as office towers condominiums Neo-modern architecture shares many of the basic characteristics of modern movement of the first half of 20th century and both of them rejects ornamentation, applied decorations or deliberate attempts to imitate the past historic references. Now, neo-modern buildings like modern ones are designed with emphasis on functionality and looking for a sober aesthetic and monolithic volumes. So neo-modernism is markedly different from original modernism by its approach to urbanism also. So the area in which most critics add the modern movement in the second half of the 20th century and takes the postulates of new urbanism of the 80s, which rejects the vision of tower in parks coined by Lee Corbusier in pursuit of buildings integrated to the city that are open to pedestrians and users. The neo modern architecture is an architectural style from the late 20th century to the beginning of the 21st century, which first appeared in 1965 and then got refined into neo modernism. The new modern architecture responded electrically to the complex architectural structure of post modern architecture through a new simple and populist design, and it can be said to be a tiny area between modernism and post modernism. So further on, we will see how the complexity of the postmodern architecture was broken down electrically through use of multiple sources of inspiration. Now here are the architectural features of neo-modern architecture. First is new simplicity. So there was a need to break away with the complexity of the postmodern architecture. Then the reaction, it came as a reaction against complexity and electricism of postmodern architecture. Reform of modern approach. So the modern approach was also reformed to break away with the monotony and uh, the complex process of simplistic modernist architecture. Then neo modern denotes the time frame when the later phase of post modernism was coming to an end. So like we have talked before also that many, many of the uh, movements that were there in the later phase of post modernism overlap with the movements of neo modernism. Then reaction against the market economy and capitalism. So finally, we can say that neo modernism, it describes a school of thought that derives from modernism, but uh, simultaneously, simultaneously, it also criticizes the modernist approach from the post modern context. Now, one of the pioneering architects of the new modernism is Richard Muir. Uh, he graduated from the Cornell University and opened his own office in 1963. 
of the architects known as the Whites or the New York Five, Richard Mir probably stayed closer to the, his modernistic roots, even as his buildings became far more lavish. Richard Mir's architectural vocabulary encompasses hundreds of shades of white. His hallmark is the Euclidean white box, sleek, shining like an ice palace. The formal purity of international style became his trademark. So like Richard Mayer explained, it is against a white surface that one best appreciates the play of light and shadow, solids and voids. Like Lee Corbusier's works, Richard Mayer's structures also seem to be autonomous. That is, they made no effort to merge with the surroundings or the context. Their machine-like clarity and other industrial materials like steel, pipe railings, glass blocks, reinforce the impression of precision and underlying geometric order. So in most of the architectural works of Richard Muir, we'll see that there is a coherence or a similar visual palette. And mainly he has taken forward the ideas of modernism. And that is why it is called neo-modernism. Neo-modernism means a new approach to modernism, which we'll see how Richard Mia has achieved in his works. And uh, this new approach has been there for many of the movements before also, like neoclassical, neo-palladian. So these were the new approaches that were given to these old movements. So here we have New Harmony Athenium which is in Indiana, USA, 1979. And it has a visitor center, which is named after the Greek Athenium or the Temple of Athena. Now it is representative of Richard Mears architectural style. And the design is based on modernity and its critical refinement. So here we can see a duality in his design approach. As we can see that his main concept or the design approach comes from modernism, whereas he also uh, has a critical refinement, which is uh, of the modernistic approach, which comes from the postmodernism. So here we see extensive use of white color, the use of predominantly rectilinear design elements, and the material palette is quite similar to what was there in internationalism style. So basically, these were the features that were directly taken or uh, inspired from the modernistic approach, like the use of white colors, use of predominantly rectilinear forms, and the material palette that is uh, quite similar to the internationalist style. Now, the critical refinement of this modernistic approach lies in the fact that you see that there are uh, uh, a lot of solids and voids in the elevation. So in one particular view, you will see this solid plate in front of you. And in another uh, angle, if you are viewing from another angle, you'll see these punctuations or the voids that you will lead your vision to the interior spaces. So there are these different punctuations in the various layers of the building, which lead you from outside to the inside of the building. Then here again in this right image, you can see the stairway in which the dynamic lines are broken into various angles, which is again not possible in the modernistic approach. The modernist approach says less is more, which means uh, lesser number of lines and that too very straight and rectilinear in their form. So here we have this visual on our screen uh, in which we can see the duality in design approach by Richard Muir. So if we divide this building into two halves from the center, so on the right side, we have a very rectilinear or a plate type of uh, elevation or the visual frame. Uh, whereas on the left side, we have a much more curvilinear visual frame, uh, more curvilinear uh, our outside of the building. And uh, so both the sides are contrasting in a manner. So we can also see that we have uh, these pilotis, which shows that the mask is hanging in air and an anti-gravity kind of effect is being given through these pilotis, which is again quite modernistic approach. Whereas the right side element, that rectilinear wall that we can see, uh, it is not at right angles to the other parts of the building, uh, which is again a very post-modernistic kind of approach. 
and similarly we can see the staircase on the left which is uh, made of many punctuations solid and voids and very uh, very rectilinear forms which are not straight so in order to balance it we have a similar kind of uh, member on the right side of the building also you can see that protruding frame outward so it balances that left side staircase So here in this uh, the Jubilee Church in Rome, which was built in 2003 by Richard Muir. There again we can see the duality of design and the white color is the predominant color again. So as far as the modernistic approach is concerned, there we have uh, rectilinear forms. Uh, but in this case we have so a uh, lot of rectilinear forms which come together and they are juxtaposed upon each other. And so we can say that it is a postmodernist uh, manifestation of the modernistic approach. So the similarity with the modernist approach uh, is the material palette that they have shown here is the steel and glass and also the white color that is again very modernistic in approach. So as Richard Muir observed, light is the protagonist of our understanding and reading of space. Light is the means by which we are able to experience what we call sacred. So light is the origin at, at the origin of this building. And he has tried to play with more and more of uh, solid and voids and rectilinear and curvilinear surfaces, light and shadow. So in a sense, he has tried to create rhythms through these elements. Here we can see how the three concrete shells define an enveloping atmosphere in which the light from these skylights above, they create a illuminated special experience and the rays of sunlight that create a mystic metaphor and it shows the presence of God inside this church. Obviously this church, Jubilee church is not a traditional one. This church was always intended to be a work of contemporary architecture that is meaningful for our times and one that is marked by openness, transparency and light cascade down the skylight roof, literally invading the interior of the church and also penetrating from below through a narrow slit that is being opened in the floor level. So people in the atrium are enveloped with these mystical lights, uh, which shows the presence of God. So next is the Barcelona Museum of Contemporary Art by Richard Muir in 1987. So here again you can see the use of white railings. So this is how the uh, color white has been used right from outside to the interior of the building. Then there you can see in the center there is a glass curtain wall which has this uh, rectilinear form on the left side and a very curvilinear kind of form on the right side. Then on the rectilinear surface on the left side of the building, you can see these punctures or the voids that have been created, which are again through the use of uh, rectilinear lines, but they are not necessarily rectangular in shape. And they have these additions or subtractions from the regular geometry. So here you can see the duality of design, wherein you can see the elements of modern architecture, which are manifested in the postmodernist way. So here in interiors, again, we see uh, extensive views of white color and there are a lot of straight lines, rectilinear forms and various rectilinear elements that are amalgamating into each other. There are so many connections being formed between these elements. So this is again against the modernistic approach, uh, which deals with the less or minimalistic approach. Richard Muir does more than just refine modernism to grasp perfection. His complex manipulation of masses, carving spaces, light, all this produces an energized interplay between outside and the inside of the building. And Muir called it as a dialectic of open and closed spaces. The space and natural light circulate expressively through irregular forms in graded layers. So again, we see the duality in the design that we have these irregular forms which are freezed into these gridded layers.
So the next pioneer architect of neo-modernism that we are going to look is John Hesduck. So he designed this uh, series of three wall houses out of which the wall house two uh, was uh, uh, ultimately built in Netherlands and it was designed in 1970s but finally it got built in 2001. So here in this design also we'll see the amalgamation of the modernist and the postmodernist uh, approach. So we can see the modernist elements such as the grey walls, then pilotis, the whole structure is uh, taken on pilotis, and then the ribbon windows, and although the ribbon windows are not rectilinear, they are in these curvilinear walls, unlike the modernist approach. Then the color palette used here is again the, not that of the modernist color palette which mainly included the primary colors. Here we see that non-pure colors have been used. So here in the design also you can see that many of the design elements are going along in this building. So this is purely not a very minimalistic approach there to deal with the modernity concept. So here in the plan we can see that we have this long spine or a corridor kind of element going through the whole uh, plan. Then there are these uh, pilotis that are taking the load of this corridor or this rec uh, rectangular spine that is going through. So these are the modernistic elements in the design. Then we also see the ribbon windows in this uh, rectangular part. Then there is this uh, freestanding solid concrete wall uh, which is denoted as a black solid wall in the plan which is uh, perpendicular to this spine or the central corridor. So this is again uh, part of a modernistic element but there are also the postmodern elements also present in this design. For example we see that uh, uh, orangish uh, building block at the rear of the building which is very uh, liberally designed with an organic or a curvilinear face. Similarly the building in front of the freestanding wall that are the yellow blue colored buildings that again have a very uh, curvilinear kind of structure which is again denotes, uh, denoting the influence of the postmodernistic architecture. So next we come to yet another great architect, Peter Eisenman. So Peter Eisenman has also a few uh, noteworthy works in the field of deconstructivism, which we will see later on in our future lectures. But here we will discuss his House 6 in Cornwall, United States, uh, which was built in 1975. It is also known as the Frank Residence. So basically it's an arrangement of rectilinear two-dimensional walls. So these were called the houses of cards because he conceived the design through models and in those models he used cardboard for making these two-dimensional rectilinear walls and through the juxtaposition of these uh, rectilinear cardboard members he used to design the whole building and then he finally manifested them these designs into the building. So that is why the, uh, his architecture was also known as the cardboard architecture or paper architecture. And these buildings were known as the houses of cards. So the major emphasis was given to the form and that is why it was called plastic architecture with no relation with construction and purely ornamentation. So basically the emphasis was on form and he used to first design the form and then fit in the functions. So as for his philosophy, he used to call it post-functionalism. The building envelope and structural elements are a manifestation of grids and slabs. So here on the right, we can see the exonometric sketch of how this uh, particular building was designed or conceived. So we see the various layers of cardboard. Some of them are protruding out of the building envelope also and how they are uh, arranged in a grid. <coughs> Then here in the figures that are shown on the left, you can see on your video, uh, here you can see the structural elements. They are not very uh, uh, rectilinear or uh, in a grid pattern. 
so the structural grid is not being followed because it is not basically for the structural purpose the purpose of these columns and beams are more of an aesthetic purpose or a visual purpose is being served to bring about a, a feeling of complexity rather than the minimalist approach so he deliberately wanted these structural members to shift from the grid because they are not derived from the uh, structural perspective uh, rather than they are derived from a visual perspective then we can also see the use of primary colors like blue uh, red green inside the interiors of this uh, house six by peter eisenman which was again the uh, color palette of the modern movement so the interior is full of uh, modernist uh, elements uh, even the color palette is same as the modernist but still you can see that the transition of spaces or the juxtaposition of the rectilinear forms is uh, a kind of more of postmodernist in nature so here as part of our general discussion we must also try to understand that uh, this uh, neo modernism has a more close relation to the destagel movement rather than the bauhaus uh, th uh, this is so because uh, if you remember the Schroeder house that we have discussed by Garrett Redwald, so this particular house six has uh, quite striking similarities to that Schroeder house, uh, both in exterior as well as in interior. That is because, uh, uh, whereas in Bauhaus, you remember that uh, the approach was minimalistic and very functional. So only the functional elements were added to the building and that were made very minimalistic in nature. Whereas in this digital, uh, as it was a art and craft movement, so it has a main emphasis on the visual aesthetics of the building. So similarly in the Schroeder house, we saw the various elements that were added to give that aesthetic appeal to the building. So similar kind of uh, additional decorative elements or aesthetic value is given to this building also that is the house six by peter eisenman so here we see this series of houses designed by peter eisenman so going anti-clockwise we have the uh, house two then we have house three and lastly we have this house 10. so students that's all for today's lecture hope you have enjoyed this lecture and got a good insight into the neo-modernist architectural style Thank you, take care and stay safe.